This is Marin Biology. My name is Charlie, and today we have an analysis of the Toccata from the Marimba Suite by Paul Siffler. This video is coming to us from Canaan in Clarksville, Tennessee. Thank you so much, Canaan, for sending this in. If you would like to have your video featured on the show, please send me a YouTube link, Dropbox link, or Google Drive link to marimbology at gmail.com. Let's get started. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of good things right off the bat. First of all, your hand technique looks really, really good. The instrument height is like perfect for you and your hand angle to the bars and the keys is really, really phenomenal. When you look at someone play marimba and you look at the shafts from the side view, their shafts should be as parallel to the ground as possible because the more you bend up the angle of the shafts, it thins out the sound of the bars. And sometimes that might be the desired effect, but most of the time you want to pull the maximum sound out of the bar you can from any given height that you're playing at. So keeping them parallel to the keyboard is really, really great. And that is something you are doing a super, super good job of. Let's keep going. Okay, your single strokes are amazing. Like they are like textbook, mm, beautiful single strokes where you're rotating very, very well around the mouth that's not moving. I mean, yours look way better than mine. Excellent job there, it looks super good. So musically, there's a lot of good things happening. I can definitely hear the melody really well. I think you're doing a really good job of keeping your mouths low to the keyboard. I feel like a lot of people get a lot of tension because they try to play everything super high and you're doing such a good job of playing things low and controlled in the piano and the pianissimo sections. One thing you, you may want to look at, and I'm not sure if this is intentional or not, but a lot of times in this piece, we have moments where you have accents that pop out of the texture. For example, if you look at measure one here, right here, we have four accents and you're only accenting the right hand. And this happens several times in the piece. Like if we scroll down, this one right here, and that's repeated, so it happens twice. Um, and then, okay, and so down here, you're only accenting the right hand, right? In these sections on the double vertical strokes. But a lot of other times, it wants you to accent both hands. But when you're playing, you're really only accenting the right hand. And I'm not sure if that's intentional or if you feel like the melody is only in the right hand, so it should only stay up there. But if the composer goes out of his way to write them in both hands, I feel like you probably should, and you probably should honor what he wrote and accent with both hands, because right now the left hand's getting really swallowed up anytime you have that. So I was looking through the sheet music here right where you stopped, and I saw this little asterisk here. And I was like, hmm, what could the composer possibly want there? So I scroll down to the bottom, and we have this right here. Pull the number one mallet back in the hand to facilitate C to D flat. Leave until star two, which you totally don't need to do with Steven's grip. So maybe the composer had uh, like a cross grip in mind, but even with most cross grips, I feel like you can do C to D flat pretty easily. Yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah, I'm not really sure why he felt the need to put that there. Hmm. Pause a sec, pause a sec. First of all, good job with the Furioso. It sounds furious. Like I'm really feeling that in the piece. Super good job there. But what, what was that gliss on? Gliss on the black. I have never seen that before. That is super, that's super weird to do because your mallet shafts are gonna wanna hit 
they're going to want to slide off and, and hit every time you have a, a, a jump. And you did a super awesome job. You did a good job with it. But I've, ne I've never seen that before. Glissando only on the black. Yeah, that's tough to do on, on mallets. Yeah, a really good job there. Um, I think the Ritardando could have been just a, a, just a little bit smoother, but I really like how you gave it a good amount of space after it was done, and you let the music breathe a little bit before moving on to the next section. Super musical, very mature. Also, this particular frame that I paused on illustrates your ridiculously good hand technique and mallet position. If you look at this number four mallet, it is just like perfectly aligned. It's just, it's just really nice to see. It's, it's a really beautiful technique that you have going on. Okay, so this is something that it's a little hard for me to tell listening to the recording in like kind of a concrete box room and, and it looks like you're using a phone to record. So I know it's compressing a lot of the audio and it's squishing the dynamics quite a bit. Um, but it seems to me like a lot of times your double vertical strokes, you get just, just a slight flam, just a little bit. And I think you're getting it about 50% of the time. You're just getting a slight flam. And doing double verticals when your hands are increasingly separated is a really difficult thing to do. And I think you have the right idea with the technique there. For those of you who've read Method of Movement, the Lee Stevens book, the further away your hands are when doing double verticals, the more your hand turns over flat. Otherwise, when your hands start spreading apart, your elbows will stick way up in the air and you'll get no sound quality. So you have to turn your hands over to a palm down position. And I think you have that technique down pretty good. You're just getting a little bit of a flam sometimes when your hands do start to separate by more than an octave, octave and a half. So there's a couple exercises you could do that'll really help you out with this. Here's one I like to do where you take at any given interval and you just play that interval on C and then on F and then on C and keep your left hand grounded somewhere so your whole body isn't leaning over and just play up and down the keyboard. And that'll help you get your hand position correct and it'll also help you avoid some of the flames that you're getting. going. Woo! Oh man, those glisses in the opposite direction is so cool. So cool. It's hard to aim that because you can't you can't see both hands at the same time. Um, you knocked it out of the park, man. Great job with that. You're really, really consistent with it and you nailed the accuracy of those notes. That is super difficult to do. Nice work. So Kanan, I think you have a lot of really good things going on for you. Your technique is super good and very relaxed. Uh, it's, it's really great. I think you're playing very musical. You're doing something that a lot of people who are younger players um, have a hard time with and that it's you're taking your mallet heights and you're keeping them very low to the keyboard and that allows the melody to always pop out and not be covered up which really really enhances the music uh, that you're trying to play and you did such a good job of that and i think your low mallet height contributed to having a nice relaxed feel and look but also contributed to having a really good balance between your hands one thing i think your video really highlights is someone who's playing music that's appropriate for their skill level and I know that might seem like a basic thing, but a lot of young players, especially, uh, you know, younger collegiate players, they want to play like the hardest things possible. And they pick music that is so physically difficult that it ends up not being musical. And right here is a perfect example of playing a piece that is 
really, really comfortable physically so you can focus on making the most musicality out of it that you possibly can. In fact, I think you are definitely ready for the next level. And that may be playing uh, a, a slightly harder piece or more challenging or longer work, but I noticed something in the score when I was looking at it a few minutes ago. Right here, it says, as fast as possible. And I'm willing to bet your technique looks so relaxed right now that you could probably play this much faster than what you had in that recording. So maybe get your metronome out and bump it up and see how fast you can comfortably play it before your hands start tensing up. Because I think you could definitely play it much, much, much faster. Overall, Kanan, you are a super musical player with great technique. I cannot wait to see how you progress in the future and where you end up in life. Our honorable mention for today is Johannes playing Strive to be Happy by Ivan Trevino. This is such a great recording. The, the mic setup and everything is just beautiful and it has some really interesting camera angles. I think this video gets the award for most creative camera angles I've ever seen in a marimba video. But it's a very good performance. There's nothing I could say like really critical about it. It's just really polishing and did a really nice job. Um, and Johannes has a number of videos on his channel that are pretty cool. So check it out. I'll put a link in the description below or you can click over here. All right, everybody, thanks so much for watching. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it, and bells if you want some more of it. I'll see you next time.